Hello and welcome to another episode of The Average EV. Today I'm just giving you a little bit of my impressions about the Tesla Model 3 refresh long range. Let's get into it. All right, everybody, so here it is. I'm sure you've seen a bunch of videos, so I'm not gonna like uh, talk too much about it, but here it is, the Tesla Model 3. Um, obviously from the outside, it just looks like the new Tesla Model 3, but inside it does have um, the extra motor, making it the long range variant dual motor. Um, a couple things that are important about the outside. Uh, well, first I wanna say these are not the stock rims. My brother put those on, so. Uh, uh, but that's, that's, what, that's what they are. Uh, and they're 18 inch wheels. Um, so there it is. This does come equipped with hardware four. You can tell because it's got the little red tint um, in the camera lens. You know, there you can see it. The, big, the biggest changes with this vehicle, obviously, as you've seen, is the front. And this, we did not take it to get washed, so we apologize. We just, we just drove 1,700 miles. <laughs> Through bugs. Lots of dead bugs here. Um, <sighs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bad. But anyways, they made, made this a nice sharp line um, across the top. Uh, they changed the headlights, and those are some of the biggest changes. I, I personally like the way it looks now and would be more likely to buy it because of the appearance. I've never really liked the kind of, the, I don't know what you would call it, but the little, little cup in the front. I'm sure it helped with aero and stuff like that, but as far as look, I was never a big fan. And then when you come around here to the back, I'm sure as all of you know, they've adjusted these uh, light fixtures here. And also uh, when it opens up, it opens up a certain way. And they now have the Tesla badging here, spelling out Tesla instead of just having the Tesla T. And here it is showing that it is in fact the dual motor variant. So another thing that's been pretty um, talked about with Tesla in general is the build quality. And so we did a walk around yesterday actually to kind of look at everything and it, it looks pretty good. Um, when you're um, walking around looking at all oh, the panel gaps, they're very good. I'm trying to think, the, the biggest ones and they're really not that bad. Um, here is a little pinch and here it's a little bit more open, uh, but that's not the end of the world. Um, this actually sits, I just noticed that, this sits a little bit higher and that sits a, a little bit lower, if you wanna show them there. It sits a little bit lower, but that's not the end of the world, um, and that probably could be adjusted. And then the other big one we found, it was just in the back. It was right, um, yeah, right here. And if you look, if you can get, you can see where it, it doesn't quite go flush across. Um, but at least, at least for aero, it goes over top, and it's not the opposite way where this is lower, and then it's catching. So that's not too bad. Um, and then you look at this side, and it's it's much much more even coming down across. But in in general, uh, it's pretty good build quality. And then you go inside and you touch all the materials, and everything feels really nice and real real high quality. All right, everyone, we actually have good news about the quality. Um, for the hood, because uh, this little, we'll show you, this little stopper is missing. So that's actually good. So that would be nice and even. So we're not sure how that fell off, because um, my brother said he doesn't remember that, and he definitely remembers it not um, being uneven. So that that's good. So good on your Tesla. I did pop it just so you all can see, but it's the standard um, front. But the big change here is they moved the windshield uh, washer fluid there instead of being up there, which makes it... I actually like that. It's really nice and easy to um, to pour it now. You can just right over the right over the ledge pour it in. So that's good. All right, everybody. I'm sitting behind myself, so I'll, I'll I would never sit like this. But if I put my knees right here, they they are into the back. But I always kind of have my knees out to the side a little bit, and that's very comfortable. I would say my biggest issue is um, because I am taller, is that this doesn't support the bottom of my leg a lot. Um, but for a short trip, I would be fine. But I would say for like a kid or something like that, it would be perfectly fine. So I don't know why to me it felt smaller. Um, now I will say, you all can see here, he has um, a screen protector, but I don't even have a fist above me as far as headroom. So the, that's where the glass is, if you all can see. Um, so that's about like in, I don't know, two inches. So if you're a little bit taller, it might be a little tight here, but it's not the worst in the world. 
here's a little screen back here. You can adjust the climate back here. Um, turn it off, turn it on. Adjust the seat position in front of you. Go to music, video, games. Lots of options here. So, uh, really good resolution. Works really nice. It's a nice little addition to make the experience in the back for the passengers even better. All right, everybody. So, so a quick uh, little review of the interior, but not, I'm sure you've watched plenty of videos you don't want to, but like I said, you touch everything and it feels nice. Kind of this um, fake leather. This um, micro suede is not on the rear wheel drive. This is just like a hard plastic. You test drove that, right? Correct. So this is a hard plastic. Um, so that touch point would be different. Um, I think the dash is a little different too, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yep. The, yeah, so the dash is a little bit different for the rear wheel drive, but aside from that, it looks the same. Um, maybe I'll feel a little less quality. This up here is like a, a that same leathery material from the seats and the armrest and stuff like that. Um, I kind of like this little fabric. I do like that little fabric accent with the gray. It's nice. All right, and as you all can see, we have the ambient lighting going all the way around. Um, I actually, uh, I don't like it. I, I, I like ambient lighting, don't get me wrong. I don't like this light ambient strips. lighting. Uh, it's, yeah, because this is a light strip. Um, there actually is um, a setting under lights where you can have footwell lights. I like having the footwell lights. I don't know if you can see that in the daytime, uh, but I like that. I've always liked that about the um, the Volkswagen ID4 having the footwell lights. It kind of it just brightens the cabin enough where there's not as much strain on the eye. Um, in uh, but it, I guess it's nice for the color. I do. Uh, I don't know if you can get it, but the the light strip on the front door doesn't line up with the light strip at the back door and it's really annoying <laughs> like so like if you're obsessive compulsive like me it's just like it's just like what like please just make it line up uh, but whatever um but it's nice to have the color accent so you know i, I whatever um another thing uh, now this is not stock he put this in um but one thing i noticed when i was driving at nighttime was like this area of the car was too dark so when we put the footwell light on that fixed that for me so i if i owned this car i would probably have the footwell light on um, i just don't like this dark with the id4 and other cars i have it has the driver's display here and that you know fixes that issue so um but that's just a little thing and maybe just a me thing um i'm not going to get too into the the uh the software everybody's seen the software but it's tesla software it works it's fine it works great there you go tesla software here we have these um the phone heaters um they really work terribly and i think manufacturers just need to stop putting them in unless they're going to put some sort of um ac ventilation to cool the phone off so it actually charges the vehicle uh, then we have the big sunroof uh, which has a vent on um but it, it is nice um, obviously not as cool as the Tesla Model S that opens up, but it's fine. I will say um, I've, been, I've been trying to build an opinion about this, and I wish the screen was just a little bit bigger, just like a, maybe like like one inch diagonal bigger. Um, it does feel a little small to me, but it's, it's plenty fine. Um, having the speed limit here and gear selector here has never bothered me. I've been fine with that. Um, the windshield wiper works fine being a button. Um, adjusting the lights, adjusting FSD on the steering wheel, and then you can change it here if you'd like. That works fine. So I've been a big fan of that. And I think those are all my general impressions of the inside. Um, it's a nice interior. Um, like the seats can be a little bit more comfortable, but it's definitely a good, um, good, good value for um, how much you're paying and what you're getting. Another thing about this car are uh, the seats it, it comes standard regardless of trim with ventilated seats and they are very nice um i i enjoyed them um uh, like i think they do a really nice job just keeping me uh nice and cool oh, yeah now they're on oh there it is uh it's definitely different if you've never used it before but i've actually uh my brother used to have a, a ford Taurus show edition and that had um ventilated seats back in the day and um uh, so I've always been a fan and wanted to get them. And uh, I am looking at the, uh, some vehicles that have ventilated seats uh, in, the, in the future uh, to potentially get. Now, as far as the comfort is concerned, um, I, I, if I'm being honest, I don't recall from my time 
when I was in the test, the Model 3 in Hawaii. Um, but I don't remember not being comfortable in the seats. And um, as, as far as the driver's seat, like I felt fine in, when I was in the driver's seat, but when I was in the passenger seat, I was slightly uncomfortable. And I don't know if the, uh, the seats are exactly the same or if there's a slight difference, but like the right for the passenger seat, the right little um, bolster under my leg, it just, it was kind of like, it was like too firm and it was like almost like stabbing into my leg um which i wasn't a big fan of so i guess i wish they could have made them a little bit more comfortable but that may have been a compromise when they did like the ventilated seats where they couldn't have um you know maybe more um support um underneath because they had to run all the um the magic that makes ventilated seats happen all right everybody so i'm just going to do some driving impressions um again I have driven the long range Model 3, the previous generation. So it's, this will be a, a good comparison. Um, immediately, I can tell that the suspension is just like so much better. Um, you don't really feel all the bumps, you know, uh, which is really nice, kind of just rolls over them. So that was a really great fix and glad they were able to do that. And of course, we're coming to a stop. So that's awesome. Really good driving impressions. Um, Anyways, as far as acceleration is concerned, because um, this is the dual motor, it's got a ton of pep. It's too much pep for me. Uh, you can ask my brother that I kind of, uh, I, 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 I lay down a little too hard uh, on the accelerator pedal, pedal sometimes, um, but it's great. And honestly, unless you uh, plan on being a performance driver and going on the track, you probably don't need the, um, the, the ludicrous or the performance that will eventually come out. I think this is more than enough power personally. Um, aside from that, um, the, the steering was great. We just took it on some back curvy roads. It handled everything really nicely. Um, felt planted, not as planted as the S that I feel like I'm just like laying on the road. Um, but, it hand, uh, but this one was nice, uh, dealt with the curves perfectly fine. Um, as far as the cabin, I thought, and he, you can chime in if you want, um, I, I thought driving 1,700 miles, it was much quieter than the previous generation Model 3, um, especially with all, because I believe this has um, acoustic glass, all of, or, or the majority of it. So it was much, much quieter and an enjoy, enjoyable experience. Whereas on, this isn't the greatest comparison, but my current Model S, it's not the quietest, quietest and it's like super loud. Sometimes I'm in the, car with my son and I can't even hear what he's saying like it, it's like that I'm going I'm going the speed limit with 55 or 60 miles an hour um, so uh, that's super nice um, the steering wheel I still don't know how I feel about it it's a little small um, I I guess I'm used to having like a little bit bigger of a steering wheel with the Model S and with the um, the Volkswagen ID4 but it's not too bad uh, as far and I'm sure a lot of people are gonna be interested about this the turn signals Generally, I have not found a scenario where I have hated having the turn signal on the steering wheel, um, but I have definitely found myself several times wanting to flip um, uh, the, uh, the stock that's not there. Uh, and so that always causes a little confusion, maybe for the drivers around me, because I go to flip it, it's not there, and then I have to remember to press the button. So then I use my turn signal late. But I'm sure if I were to drive this car over a longer period of time, I would be able um, to set that. <clears throat> the next thing I'll talk about briefly is um, uh, FSD. I'll do a little bit more in-depth in dive later, but in initially it works decently well. I haven't been able to use auto uh, autopilot by itself. Maybe I'll, I'll stop and um, turn autopilot on, um, but it, it generally works nicely. I, I'm not feeling that thing where I'm too far to the left, which I, I really don't like which is nice, it keeps you centered in the lane. And obviously FSD does a nice job adjusting to the other cars most of the time while you're moving. If a car pulls out in front of you, I think that FSD really struggles 50% of the time. Sometimes it'll just like slam on the brakes, uh, which is really confusing to other drivers and sends a really mixed message. Uh, and other times it it could be the exact same car length, car cuts in front of you and they navig it navigates it perfectly. So it's just kind of, one of the things where they kind of need to build up consistency. All right, everybody. Uh, so I actually, I went ahead, uh, we parked at that light and I uh, turned on autopilot, or auto steer, I think is what they're calling it now, um, just to see if it's different. 
than what I'm used to in the Model 3 and also in the, the Model S. So I've done Autopilot 1, 3, and then this will be 4. Uh, so I just want to see, yeah, it's, I feel much more comfortable in this where I feel more centered than the lane. And that, sh it stresses me out because being too far to the left, um, I felt, and this was both in the, the Model 3 with uh, um, Autopilot 3 and Hardware 3 where I felt like it was going to pull over the line and I don't feel that way at all. I feel much more comfortable and relaxed. I'm going to change the lane here and just see how that navigates it. Nice. Plants me in the lane. And then, good, that was good. I like that. Yeah, so this is much better. So it's definitely improved um, to a point where I would enjoy using this. Now here's, um, this is an unpopular opinion. I would probably prefer just to use this autopilot than FSD. That's probably gonna be a really unpopular opinion, um, but I think it's more than plenty good. And then here's actually another thing I really like about auto, all of autopilot since autopilot one i think that tesla has done a really good job as far as navigating stops um, where it feels like a natural stop that a human would do um, the id4 struggles with that severely um, uh, so much where when it goes to stop it like won't like it's like yeah it's you take over like i'm i can't finish this um, and i've just i've played around too with, at different speeds coming to other cars at a complete stop and it almost always will do it perfectly. It'll slow down and it's not like psh, a harsh break. So yeah, um, you're a big, big fan of autopilot. Um, can't complain. I definitely think that it is a great um, ADAS system for people to use. All right, everybody. So this is our little suspension test. Um, so here we go. Uh, I'm going to like roll over everything at like, let's do like 10 miles an hour. I'll try and avoid the really bad potholes. Wow. Oh, there we go. We got a speed bump, speed bump, speed bump, speed bump. That was not terrible. It really was not terrible. If I, I take the Model S on this road, uh, it's a disaster. Why don't you turn turn a little bit so they can see the the yeah, this, and then try and get me in the shot so they can see my body jostle. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. Ten miles an hour. Yeah, that wasn't too bad. That was a steeper one. And that, yeah, that was a little bit higher. I, th I think that dealt with it really, really nicely. So, yeah, obviously this suspension is improved and I would say of good quality. Um, so, yeah, good good work, Team Tesla, for uh, making improvements to make this a really a great, a great value. And I'm pretty sure that the suspension, maybe you would know better than me, the suspension is the same on both, right? Uh, correct one long range and short yeah so we so if you want to get the the rear wheel drive um, you're gonna get the same really nice suspension package um, and I think I think probably that it's like thirty eight thousand nine something something like that's a really great deal if you just need a, like a, a daily cruiser a commuter car like go for it um, all right everybody so that is the, the Tesla model three. A refresh and all my opinions about it. It really is a nice package for the price. It's, I would say, unbeatable. Um, if 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 you want a car, like this is the car to get. I I, I don't know what else to tell you. Um, personally, for me, I have some reservations about Tesla and stuff like that. And I also have a YouTube channel, so I like to cover different vehicles. So that's why I make my decisions. But for the everyday person who just needs a car that works, I mean, this is a car and it works really well and it's also high quality and feels like, I don't wanna say luxury, but it feels luxury at least, not without actually being luxury. So uh, thanks again for watching. Hope you found this video helpful and I will catch you all next time.